Hi guys, welcome to Christ Curls and Conversations. We are here with Robin Olivia. She's all the way out in Canada and I'm so excited to have you. Um, I would just love you to jump right into your story. Um, how did pornography first come into your life and what age were you? Um, let's see. So I was in junior high, uh, probably about age 13 or 14. It was grade eight or nine at the time. And um, I was raised very, very conservatively, um, Christian household, but like in the sense of like a loving household, like they were never like too imposing of values or views, but just kind of like wanted to lead me um, to Christ. So like anything in the aspects of like sexual fornication really talked about. So like, I didn't really know much about that kind of stuff at that time. Um, but of course, going to public school, you get surrounded by it and I had one friend who was just very very into that kind of stuff and already having sex at that age and it was just kind of new to me to be around somebody that knew so much and kind of well, knew so much for a 14 year old right. um and so like when we used to have sleepovers we used to go on I think it was chat roulette which mm -hmm. is like the most toxic form of like social media for a 14 year old right. and I just remember her like talking to guys and just like always like offering to send pictures and I never knew like what she was like talking about when she meant like send pictures right. and then I just have this vivid memory of her going asking me to go into her closet for like 10 minutes and I was like okay sure like whatever and um as I was in the closet, like, I could hear her making sounds, and, like, of course, like, I asked her through the door, like, what are you doing, and she was, like, oh, like, I'm playing with myself, and I was, like, oh, wow, you're what, <laughs> and so she was doing this stuff on camera for, like, guys, right, and then, yeah, from there, it kind of got a little bit, like, I'm in high school now, like, grade 10, um, at the age of 15, that's when you start liking guys a little bit, or at least for me, I was a late bloomer, um, but, yeah, so, like, that kind of thing just got, like, more encased into my youth, and, like, I started, like, dating at 15 but like I didn't like officially start like doing much beyond like making out until yeah. I was like 19. I'm 23 now mind you so it's been like a couple of years yeah. um and yeah so I, it happened at a very young age and then yeah I just I was probably one of the most innocent out of all of my friends because of that like Christian upbringing yeah. they were all losing their virginities around like age 16 and 17 and I just I knew I wasn't ready um, so I was like, I'm going to wait. I wanted to be in love first at least. Um, so yeah, that, around 16, 14 to 16 was that time when I started like searching it up on the internet too. And like, mm -hmm. that's when it starts popping up in like a pornography sense. It's not just like learning about like what sex is. You're actually seeing it between two other people. And mm -hmm. at that time, like you weren't really told that like pornography was wrong because you're usually too embarrassed to talk about it with your parents. Yeah. So it was like, I was just getting so much information from the internet and then my parents were also like oh like um like nothing is supposed to be kept between like a husband and a wife and like you really shouldn't be watching other people do it that is sinful but at the age of like 16 you're not really thinking about sin yeah, not at all so yeah i guess you could say it was quite quite young but i definitely had friends who were like already into that kind of stuff at 12 so Wow. It, it's so interesting that, cause I, I've actually never heard a story about someone else basically doing it in front of you or you're like behind a door and mm -hmm. hearing the noises and she was just doing webcam with someone. And, and did you ever, did it like spark your interest at all to like, like go out there and see what it was and like do it with her or anything? Or was it just like, Honestly, I don't remember too much or just like the feelings that I was going through were more awkwardness at that age. So yeah. I was just kind of like, why is she doing this more than like, I kind of want to join. I, I didn't, I don't remember having the desire to, like I could have, but I just don't remember it. Um, if anything, like knowing who I was at that age and how awkward of a being I was, I don't think I would have had any desire to go out and just kind of like see or like do it. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, of course, that, like, desire increases the more that you, like, involve yourself in worldly things. Yeah, for so. sure. And then, yeah. and then what age did you say when you started, like, seeking it out yourself? Um, I was about 19. 19. Um, I had been with my relationship at the time for about a year. Like, we had been best friends for about two years, and, um, mind you, I was still a virgin at this age, mm -hmm. so, um, I don't know. I lost my virginity to him about month four of our relationship and like had no desire to look into pornography while I was with him. We had a very, very like, um, 
kind of conservative relationship as well. Like he didn't know Christ, but I did at the time, or I, I was getting to know Christ because I wasn't born again until I was about 21. Um, but like, again, I loved Jesus throughout my whole life. It's just the difference of like following him that really makes the change. Um, so yeah, it was like around age 19 that that started happening. And then once I, I started to feel like I wanted to find somebody else that was kind of like searching out Christ as much as I was at that age. Mm -hmm. So about a year and a half after we got together and like we were having sex, like here and there, it wasn't like frequent. Um, I decided that I wasn't in love with him anymore because we weren't on the same path spiritually and we were just drifting apart in a lot of ways too. We didn't have much in common. Mm -hmm. So I left him back in about, I think it was July of 2016. And at that time I was like, I broke up with him and I said it out loud that like, I'm breaking up with you because I want somebody that's on the same path spiritually and trying to find Christ. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't think that's ever going to be me. And I was like, okay, like, let's end it here. And then I swear, like a month later, I met another guy who just led me so far away oh. and just like, oh, I swear that was like the enemy right there. He was like, I have my chance. And wow. I was so young and naive at the time that it was just like, oh, like I found somebody that I wanted to do things with more sexually and like explore that sexual side of myself. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I was contradicting it, saying that I wanted to find Jesus too. So it was just kind of like, obviously not a good mix. And that's when the enemy steps in and really grabs you and pulls you away. And I believe that that person was put in my life specifically to do that. But of course, the Lord lets us go through those trials because he ultimately does know when you're going to come back. Mm -hmm. So I really do believe that he allowed that person to be put there to pull me away so that when I did come to him, it was serious. And like, I did want true repentance at that time. Wow. So I love the way that you stated that because as soon as you were, you cut it off with the first guy and you were like, no, because I need someone that's like going the same direction as me with Jesus. It was like the enemy like came in and was like, all right, I'll have to place this person in your life that's going to direct you way further away. It's like he wants to attack us as soon as we get even closer to Christ. It's and so true. Yeah. It's, it's really crazy. So, so when you were in this relationship, what things do you think were taking you away from Christ even more? Like was, cause you were saying more sexual stuff, right? Yeah. 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 So right before that relationship happened, I was like, Oh, I want to find somebody that's going to be able to please me sexually. Cause mind you, the relationship I had previously been in wasn't really all that pleasing for me. Like it was all about him sexually. And I wanted to find somebody that was a little bit more about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I met him on my 20th birthday, which was just like, the start of that kind of like drift away. And so when we started talking, um, we were texting each other and just like talking like, hey, like, um, what do you wanna do when we hang out? And he gave me like a list of seven things we could do. And it was like, oh, like play video games, like paint figurines, go on a walk. And then he was like, fuck. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Cause at that time that's what I was into. Right. And like, I wanted that. So I started talking to him about like, okay, like I've never really been around the block. Um, I've only slept with one person. And right now I'm just looking for casuality. Mm -hmm. I just wanna like, broaden my horizon sexually Mm -hmm. biggest mistake but still we all learn from those things um so yeah he was like yeah no like what guy's gonna say no to that so he was like yeah of course like we can do that I'm not really in the place for a relationship right now either um just got out of like a long-term one and I I was like yeah cool so like we started having like casual sex here and there um I wanted to go get tested first and everything to make sure I was good and um I think it was like our second texting conversation that we started about the things we were into sexually and the things we wanted to try because he was a very open person when it came to like conversating about that kind of stuff he was never Mm -hmm. like shy or anything um so he was like I'll I'll let you know like fair warning I'm into some like pretty like like kinky stuff Mm -hmm. and I was like like meeting what and he was like BDSM and of course me being like more innocent at the time I was like oh like I I think I know what that means, but like what kind of BDSM, because there's a multiple, like there's so many different forms of it. So he was like nothing too like, like aggressive, that kind of stuff. So he um, was like, if you're into that kind of stuff, like that's what I'd like to do. And I was like, of course, for sure. Let's give it a try. 
so we gave it a try and I ended up like really, really enjoying it. So this really pulled me into that like fornication aspect of the sin. Mm. And I just, I didn't see it because mind you at this time, like I was still trying to personally grow in my relationship with Christ while still willfully sinning. Wow. But I didn't really know that I was willfully sinning. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like you're so you're ingrained into it. blinded and deceived from it. Like trying exactly. to with Christ, but then also trying to go your own way. Mm-hmm. Like I never departed from praying or anything like that. Like I was always in prayer um, and like always questioning, like, why are these things happening to me? Like, why is he cheating on me? But like, we're getting like sexual satisfaction over here. And it was just like confusion everywhere. But mind you, the entire time that we were together, I kind of knew that it wasn't going to, wasn't going to last. Cause I was like, he's seeing somebody else. It was his ex-girlfriend and then also me and he was lying. But then whenever I would confront him on those lies, he would be super honest all of a sudden. And that's what kept pulling me back was that trusting aspect of my nature. So, um, yeah, like after we started getting into BDSM stuff, like that's when I started to kind of like search it up online and really, really started to accumulate my addiction to watching it, um, and not just experiencing it. Right. So in a sense, from you learning about BDSM from him, it made you want to learn more about it in the pornography videos. Yeah. And I wanted to take what was in the, apply that to us. Wow. Yeah. And, and I've noticed that that tends to happen. Like, well, you first experienced it in real life instead of the videos, but something um, that I've noticed in my life and other people's lives is we'll watch a video and be like, wow, we want to reenact that in real life. Yeah. So, so yours was like, I want to learn more about how to satisfy in real life. Exactly. And the thing with him too, was that like, it, like in a lot of relationships, I find when we start to kind of like go online and look at those things, it puts a downer on most sexual relationships because of course, pornography is like way over exaggerated and you're usually not able to kind of reenact those things to the full extent emotionally that it looks in the video and physically but the thing with him was was that he was 100% capable of doing that it was like never a disappointment in my eyes until afterwards when we were laying next to each other and it was just kind of like the relationship was dead but the sex was amazing so it was like the satisfaction was all there physically but then emotionally he had so much like depression and anxiety and just like so much baggage that like I've never personally experienced I was just kind of like, well, something's missing. And of course it was Jesus and the fact that we were sinning. Yeah, for sure. Wow. I love that you brought all that up. And it's interesting because you were saying like he had all this baggage and depression and all that. And the Lord literally says that we become one flesh with these people when we're giving our bodies away to them. So was there, whenever you were doing this stuff with him, having sex with him, fornicating, all that, did you ever feel a sense of like, like you were feeling him more often, like the the depression episodes or like anything like that? In a sense, yes. Um, I've always been a very positive person and it, like I've been able to read people very easily my whole life, but I feel like that kind of got blocked off when I was with him. Like I wasn't able to read him as well as I was other people. Wow. Um, and so like, I still got like, of course, like I can tell when he's like feeling depressed because he would get really quiet and just kind of like roll over. Um, but at the same time, like when we were together, it, that seemed to all go away for him. And then at one point in our relationship, he actually admitted that he uses sex as a coping mechanism for his depression. Mm-hmm. And that's why he cheats and uses people. And like, we used to have very, very deep conversations for like hours upon end. So it wasn't just about necessarily sex in our relationship. We did have a good friendship as well we were just kind of tainting that with the sin behind it so that's kind of like during those like long conversations I could kind of start to read where those things were stemming from and why he was doing what he was doing but I could never personally feel that upon myself if that makes sense like I was still able to go home and feel pretty positive about myself afterwards which is really really toxic yeah well for sure it was like you were you were sensitive of knowing like okay this is what he's experiencing and that's why he goes to this but like in a sense you don't need to go to it for those type of coping right exactly that makes sense so you found out that you were getting a lot more addicted when you were with him and looking at the bdsm when did you realize like oh i actually need to stop doing this (laughs) um about almost a year after he had left me 
because um it got to the point where he was like hey like I really want to just be with the girl that I like met before you and like just like every time I'm with you I think of her that kind of stuff and I was like okay like you go do you like that's fine because I knew like in my heart knew that it wasn't gonna last yeah. which was totally fine like I was able to kind of just process our relationship very quickly after that and then mind you after he had left me I started looking for what he could give me sexually in other guys so I started sleeping around and kind of like whoring myself out trying to look for love in the wrong places mm -hmm. um so I think I had been with I've been with six people in total since like my very first relationship um he was number two and then everybody after that was just me looking for what he could give me in them yeah. um and then I think it was April 2018 um, so like about two years after I had met him, I was kind of with this other guy at the time that he was a little bit younger than me, but like he was probably like the closest to giving me what he could have gave me, but that lasted like a month and a half. And, um, after I started to realize like right in April, 2018, like I'm not finding what I'm looking for, what is happening. I started to pray really, really intensely. Wow. And mind you, like a a couple weeks before that had even happened, I had given my life to Christ in a very public, like, place, and so I just felt, like, this pull away from all that sexual sin, and I, like, basically just, like, ended up crying and praying that, like, Lord, just, like, help me get out of this sexual, like, habit of mine where I'm looking for of what so-and-so gave me um, in everybody else if you can just like help me get away from that and just like wait until marriage and just be uh, like abstinent until that happens like I want to wait for the man that you have for me and as soon as I said that I started to feel less desire for that kind of thing mm -hmm. and so like I stopped having sex with people pretty much right away and then after that I was still looking at porn and everything like that still like masturbating doing that kind of stuff pleasing myself because I wasn't actually seeking it out I didn't really think it was all that much of a sin yeah. because I was like oh like we're sexual beings like worldly things right like I was applying what the world thinks about humans being sexual and like it being okay to kind of myself and I was like okay well if I'm just doing it to myself then I'm not actually sinning with somebody so it's wow. fine and then after I started adding these people on Facebook who were also trying to look for Christ and talking very much about sexual fornication. They started to post things about like masturbation being a sin and like pornography being a sin. And I was like, so open at that point to praying about, um, what's the word? Um, conviction. Yeah. That I instantly was like, Lord, like if I'm doing something that you're not wanting me to do, like pull me out of it, convict me. Like I want to be convicted on that. So he did obviously because I'm out of it now and that's I think it's been I, I I can't put a timeline on that one but I feel like it's been closer to a year maybe over a year since I did that and um yeah it was basically like not instant but pretty much instant maybe within a month I was like okay like every time I'm laying in bed and I want to look up on google like corners or something to like please myself lord just help me like not do that distract me like mm -hmm. whether it be on Facebook or Instagram or something like that reading scripture even is the best bet you can do mm -hmm. but yeah it was it was a journey for sure, for sure. <laughs> and it's definitely like something that still affects me like I still think about like looking those things up or like masturbating yeah. to things myself but obviously I'm at a point now where I don't feel I need that kind of gratification mm -hmm. because I have Christ and that's the best gratification we can have Amen. That's so good. I was literally just about to ask you, like, what do you think have been the repercussions since watching it all? Like, does, has your brain been programmed to, like, look for that or, like, want that specifically through sex or something like that? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Those kind of things, I don't feel like fully leave us while we're in our fleshly bodies mm -hmm. um, because we are surrounded in a world full of evil and full of lies and deception, especially when it comes to sexuality, because it's so prevalent in our society. Wow. I feel like until we are in our spiritual bodies, we'll always somehow be affected by it. Mm -hmm. Whether or not we're actually participating in it, um, that's like the goal we're supposed to live without outside of our fleshly bodies and in spirit. So that's what I really try to do when I start to feel those kind of pulls back into sin. I just instantly go into prayer and just like try to distract myself with something else. I love that. I, yeah, that, that's seriously what you have to do because like, I, I, I love what you said about like, it, it got to the point where you were like, well, Lord, like convict me if I'm actually doing something wrong. If I'm not in your will, like show me. And 
he, it's like when we begin to seek him and want to know like what he actually says about something is when it actually begins to show to us like, oh, I do need to get this out and why am I doing this? But it's so, it's a lot easier to release when the Holy Spirit is convicting us instead of us trying to do it on our own, you know? Like, yeah, it seems, it seems like he knows how to get it out of us way more than we know how to. <laughs> 100%. He's all knowing. Yeah, exactly. Like we, we need a savior. That's why he came down here, which is awesome. Um, so in terms of where you're at now, you, you were talking about distraction, like distracting yourself. Um, what do you do now to like replace the pornography? Honestly, it was not something that I was, like, doing every, like, day, like, something that I was, like, seeking out when I was bored. Yeah. So, like, it was just kind of, like, oh, if I'm laying in bed and I get the urge, like, just look something up. Um, so, honestly, like, now I just watch The Office a lot, which is obviously, <laughs> like, another distraction away from scripture, and I'm trying to push, like, TV out of my life, too. Um, it can be very hard. But um, I usually just go for a walk, eat some food, watch some TV. But most importantly, like, I'll go take a bath and just listen to scripture because I have the Bible app on my phone and I like to listen to the KGB version over audio because yeah. I feel like reading things, I have the worst reading comprehension, but when I'm listening to something, it's actually, like, kind of more ingrained into what I'm kind of, like, perceiving. Yeah, that's awesome. I, it, it's just good that, I mean, you said you weren't always bored when you when you were doing it. It was just, like, you were in your bed and, like, let me check this out, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but that's awesome that you're just like literally steering the opposite direction, finding other outlets to place there. Like I've had to literally be like, okay, what am I putting in each segment of time here? Because I know if I have an open window, it's like, I, it's like a void of space where I'm like, oh, well in this space, I could do this. I could watch porn if I wanted to. I could masturbate if I really wanted to but I have to put something there because if I don't yeah. have something there, my first thoughts go to like pornography or some type of sexual thing that I want to do. So it's oh, yeah. good you're doing that. Oh. Yeah. That's the tough part too, is like really controlling the thoughts around it because like you could not even have a desire to really be looking at it, but like yes. all of a sudden you start to conjure up old memories of even like partners that you've been with and like experiences that you've enjoyed where you're like, Oh, I could, be indulging in that and then you realize we're supposed to guard our thoughts too yeah. and that's when you have to like snap out of it and like ask the lord like get these thoughts out of my head like help me conquer that and just kind of control it because that's the hardest part in my book um especially when you're sleeping too because i i've always had dreams mm -hmm. my entire life very very vivid dreams that i've always been able to remember and like for like maybe the last month maybe even like three months now I've been having more and more sexual dreams mm -hmm. and every time I wake up I'm like lord like get that out I don't want that but at the same time like your fleshly body still enjoys that and it's difficult in that sense because you're like spiritually I need to get away from this but then fleshly like it's pulling you towards it mm -hmm. so like that's just like the difficulty of being human in a sense is that we're always going to be like naturally sinful and that's why we need Jesus and I feel like anybody who is trying to get out of a porn addiction needs to seek God as well as trying to seek out of that addiction. Amen. Wow. I love that. Um, I, I also really love that you brought up the dream stuff. Um, so when you've had these sexual dreams, uh, have you ever felt like in your dreams, like you actually like watched porn or masturbated or done that type of stuff? And then you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm so glad that I didn't do that. Like, and that was just my flesh and my thoughts. Yeah, like, realistic dreams happen all the time to me. And honestly, like, it's never something where it's weird because, like, while I'm in my dream, like, it feels so real. And I'm like, oh no, I'm sinning. And I'm aware of the sin in my dream wow. where I'm like, okay, like, I need to stop. But then your dream is kind of controlling itself and just going in its own way. And you end up like either masturbating in your dream or like having sex with somebody you've already had sex with in your previous yeah. like life before you were born again and then you wake up and you're instantly like okay like that wasn't real like you still ask the lord for forgiveness because you're like those are my thoughts like wow it's not fully your fault because we're not fully capable 
of controlling what's going on in our subconscious Mm -hmm. unless you're like a really good lucid dreamer which I feel like is like not realistic for most people (laughs) but um yeah it's definitely difficult to kind of pull away from that and remember to like repent afterwards because like he'll forgive us no matter what like he's not going to hold it against us we have to just remember to repent of it and continue to ask and seek him every day exactly yeah that's so good um there's there's been multiple times in my dreams where I literally like I was telling you have felt like I did do it and I have to wait like I'll wake up and be like did I actually, or did I not? Like, I'm, I'm so confused. Like, Lord, can you just like get me through this? And I really feel like a lot of this is the enemy, um, his Mm -hmm. spiritual ground of work as well. Like, I know that God gives us prophetic messages, but I feel like the enemy really wants to taint our dreams too, and just give us more, um, stumbling blocks inside of our dreams to be like, well, this is what you want. This is what your flesh wants. So you might as well just indulge in it. You know? Exactly. I hate it, honestly. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, that's why I'm just so excited for the second coming. Like, I'm like, once it, <laughs> once he's back, we're not going to feel these things. We're not going to have a need for them. Like, this thing is, this stuff isn't going to exist in the new earth. And it's just going to be so much easier. But like, no, I've had those dreams too, where you just wake up and you're like, oh no, like, I used to indulge in that. That was the unborn again me. Like, I am a new creature now. But at the same time, like, once you wake up, you're, like, craving it at that point. You're like, I want to just masturbate or, like, even seek somebody that would be able to give me that. But at the same time, it's not worth my salvation. Mm -hmm. Because, like, people say a lot, like, you can lose your salvation. And I'm kind of on the edge of believing that or not. Because at the same time, I'm like, if we can lose our salvation, that's kind of placing value on our works more than the actual exactly. sacrifice of Christ. And if we're born again, he'll actually start to convict us of our sins to the point where they disgust us and they like you yes. won't want to participate in that kind of stuff. So if you're actually born again, you're not gonna fall back into that sin, which means wow. you're forever saved. Wow. You're not gonna have to seek out those kind of things to please your flesh. And if you do, you're probably not born again. Mm. And that's where you need to like fight to find is mm. that disgust in the sin that you used to participate in. Mm -hmm. And that's going to take time to do. Like, of course, like when I was newly born again, I didn't quite have that disgust, but I knew I didn't want to seek after sin more than I did Christ. That's good. But Um, yeah, in terms of the born again part, like, I feel like the Lord slowly reveals to us more and more as we're born again, like where we need to like put away our flesh you know, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, it's, it's, cause for me, it took three years while being inside of Christ to be like, oh, I really need to let go of this. Like I've let go of everything else fleshly, but this one thing is the one thing the Lord has just been like snapping at me to let go of. Yeah. And it, it was like an ongoing thing where it wasn't until he showed me human trafficking that it like, blew me out of the water where I was like, oh, human trafficking and pornography are go hand, in hand. Go hand in hand. I like, I've been so against human trafficking, but here I am watching pornography. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. And then when the Lord showed me that was whenever I was just like, I need to stop. Like, yep. and I feel like it, it comes during the journey where like, although that there's people that sin like we're sinners we we are in a fallen world like but the thing is is that we are born again and we are able to just continue to go back to the lord but we shouldn't use that as like manipulation to go back to him all the time and repent and pray to like forgive us and all that stuff but um it, it in a sense it's what was i gonna say um in a sense, it's like he just slowly reveals to us. And although we might be sinning, like while we're in Christ, the same thing that we keep saying to him, like, why do I keep doing this? Like, Lord, help me out of this. Like, I I feel like he is just giving it to us at the exact moments that we need, need it. It, if that makes sense. it does. Cause like, 
even with the whole sexual, like when it started for me back in 26 or 2015, I don't, I, I think I lost my virginity in 2015, but that was only like five years ago now, almost um, in October. And I just feel like that was the number one thing. He was like, you need to stop. Like, I'm going to pull you out of this. And that's going to be the start of like, just pulling you out of sin in all aspects of your life. So like, it was hard and it only took like a maybe two and a half year period because I started having sex in 2015 and then I stopped in 2017. Like, thank the Lord. Like a lot of people struggle with it for like 10 years of their life, yeah. but they're still not anything less than me. Like just because I was able to be pulled out of it so fast and I don't credit myself at all for that. It was definitely Christ because um, I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Two years versus 10 years is still the same in the Lord's eyes. He'll forgive it no matter what. Wow. And that's the beauty of Christ and his forgiveness. He has mercy for everybody. And it doesn't matter how long you've been a sinner. Because, like, we're all sinners. It's mm -hmm. just something we have to deal with. But, yeah, like, the whole sexual sin was the first thing he pulled me out of. And then I used to smoke pot a lot, too. And, mind you, I started smoking pot around the same time. Like, it was actually the same day that I met the guy that kind of like pulled me into the whole BDSM aspect mm -hmm. and um we used to do it a lot together and then I smoked it for years after he broke up with me too so like um this year actually in 2019 was the year when I started to feel like more convicted on it because again those people that I befriended on Facebook um who were also in Christ um started posting stuff about that and I was like oh no I really don't want to give up pot but I mean if it's something that I should then again, like Lord convict me. And I was really hoping that he wouldn't because I was like <laughs> trying to hope that it wasn't a sin because like, even to this day, like I still think about getting high, but he did start to convict me on it. And I was like, okay, like I do need to stop. And that one probably, t it was a lot harder for me to quit marijuana than it was for me to quit sex, which is wow. sad in a sense, but I did it. And it's been about, I think six months now. And um, yeah, that just like that last toke just convicted me so much that I was like, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. And then to be honest, like I accidentally got high. I think it was back in November. So I'll say two months, but it was like an accident. And I like genuinely didn't know that it was going to make me high. It was an edible, but I was Oh, okay. And then after that, like that one trip, I was just so convicted there too. I was praying the entire time. I was like, Lord, forgive me. I'm really sorry. I just wanted the cookie. Um, but yeah, of course he forgives me for that too. I just, I, it's sure. something that is hard. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, I'm definitely going to be praying for you. With, with <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that you've been for one set free from pornography and getting or set free as well from marijuana. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's just, it's really good when we as children can come to him and be like, I want you to show me, like, tell me if this is wrong. Because we can, I've read in his word and I read it, but there's things where some of it still doesn't make sense where I'm like, okay, but what are you saying here? <laughs> like, yeah. What are you really saying? And it isn't till we really ask those questions and we really want to know his heart. And from like a really pure heart, we want to know um, is when it's really revealed to us. I, like, yeah, I just feel like it's really revealed when we seek first the kingdom. 100%. Uh, yeah. So Especially when those addictions go hand in hand with each other too. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So in uh, your words, what, how, what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> um, so in your words, why does God call us to purity? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> Again, my comprehension is really bad. So just let no, me think. Fine. <laughs> um, personally, like, I think he calls us to purity because he wants us to be the example. And I think he chooses people who have had like a like a fair hand in those addictions so that we can speak from a place of experience mm. like personally I wouldn't really take the word of somebody who had like gotten married had sex for the first time at like 24 and then come to me and said you need to come out of those addictions I'm like how can you even say that you've never had anything to do with those addictions and mm. like you you don't have the experience or like the life just experience in general to be able to say that whereas somebody who has been saying like addicted to porn or marijuana for example for like the past 10 years or five years or two years or whatever can actually say like hey i've done that if you need the help christ was the one that helped me and i feel like that can more bring people to christ than saying like oh i got my 
myself out of this addiction through like a and a or whatever or like like pornography anonymous something like that like i feel like it really draws people more towards him when believers who especially have believed in him their whole life or been like even just within the past couple of years can say hey even though I was sinning and saying that I loved Christ, I still had these addictions pulled out of them. And it was 100% because he helped me. And because I had that, like, just never ending desire to pray and seek him in it. And like, even though it may take longer for some people than it will others, as long as we see Christ, I believe he'll bring us to that purity that we crave. Amen. Amen. That is so good. I love it. Um, <laughs> so, so, in terms of marriage, let's let's get into the marriage topic real quick. The um, fun one. <laughs> so, would you say that um, if you have a pornography addiction beforehand, this is going to continue inside of marriage? Like, like if you haven't like gotten out of the pornography addiction yet? Yeah. So, so if someone is in Christ and they are thinking of getting married do you think that if they have a pornography addiction that it's going to continue inside their marriage 100 percent. if you haven't gotten out of that addiction yet and you're still seeking pleasure outside of the marriage bed or even like before you're married like say you're engaged and you're like your husband or your fiance is at their house and you're at your house even if you're thinking about your husband while you're like looking at pornography it's still sinful mm -hmm. you still shouldn't be seeking pleasure outside of that situation and that's why god created marriage so that we can be bonded together in him like mm -hmm. sex is a sacred act and it does need to be participated in within that marriage man and woman relationship and it has to have Christ in it, or it just is, isn't is exactly what God created it to be. And I don't believe that has any worth at that point. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you can participate in the act or like mindfully participate in the act. But if it's without your husband, then I believe it's just pure sin. Like you, yeah. whether you see it or not, I think you need to seek the Lord in that aspect and want, like start praying on it and asking for that conviction. Mm -hmm. I don't even believe that personally people sh should be getting married. If they're still in that sin, I think you need to work on that on your own time and allow Christ to work within you and prepare you and get you used to that singleness and that purity in mind, which is like why I'm single right now, I feel, is because I was so addicted to those things and I'm still slightly within them, mindfully, like even though I'm not watching them, even though I'm not participating them in them, I still get those dreams prevalently. I can't say the damn word. Dang word. Sorry. Um, but that's why i feel like a lot of people just need to be single before they get married for a couple of years just focus on you and what christ has to do within you and then once he's ready go into that marriage yeah i completely agree i love what you said because um you're single i'm single this is this is literally a time when your attention is just so on him what does he want for your life what is his purpose for your life? And you're not worried about another person. It literally says in the Bible, um, the, the single woman is worried about the Lord and the married woman is worried about the worldly desires of her husband. And it's divided between um, the Lord as well. So when you're in this relationship in marriage, your time is divided. So being single is one of the best places where you can learn about who, who you are, your identity is in the Lord and learning where you need to let go of addictions or red flags or things like that, that a lot of people don't even like think about that they need to release in their singleness. They just think that, oh, I'm single because I'm not dating anyone or like I'm single because no one has caught my interest, but being single is an actual season. Like you can be in a single season where you're not even looking to date. You're not looking for any of that. You're really getting clear with the Lord. Is that something that you're doing right now? Yeah. And I'm not going to pretend in the slightest that it's easy Yeah, because it's not. 
I am the kind of person who loves to be in a relationship. I love to have that significant other. And like, when I'm single, I find that I'm looking more at like physicalities in people. Like I'll see a cute guy and I'm like, oh, like they're cute. Like what, like Lord is he for me? Um, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Like silly things. But when I'm in the relationship, I feel like I'm more capable of like being loyal and just like, like focused on that one person. I'm not looking elsewhere, which is why I think I am. I'm single right now so that I can get used to in my singleness not looking around and just kind of allowing the Lord to work within me and then like placing that person in my life when he's ready to and like I've been able to cultivate kind of a lot more values of what I want in a spouse because of that mm -hmm. so like obviously the Lord told, tells us not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers so all the guys that I used to date in the past and was sleeping with they weren't believers like at all like I think almost every guy I've been with has been an atheist wow. and I am which is insane because like like a couple of them weren't like quite atheists like there is no God they were just on the edge of like there is something but it's like they don't see Jesus Christ as Lord like they don't know him as Lord Savior yeah. God because it's a trinity he's three in one yeah. um and they just didn't believe in that and that's what I want in a husband like I want my husband to be more like ingrained in Christ than I am currently like I want him to be more on a path of like seeking away from sin and more towards Christ so that because your husband is supposed to lead you yes. and I want to be led like I'm definitely submissive in that sense and like I know that's so unlike society nowadays like women are so ingrained and just like being their own person and just career-wise like they want to do all these things which there's nothing wrong with in this society like you do need to have a career or even a job just to survive at this point but I feel like women have kind of lost along the way learning that submissiveness mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of women don't quite understand that we're not supposed to be submissive to man we're supposed to be submissive to godly men and there's a very big difference mm -hmm. because obviously a man who isn't of Christ isn't going to lead us or know how to lead us mm -hmm. because the man that does have God is being led by God and in a sense that's God leading you so that's why like women just kind of get this like bad taste in their mouth when they hear like oh be submissive to men yeah. no we're not telling you to su submit to just any Joe on the street we're telling you to submit to the man that is being led by God and that's a very very different thing yeah. Amen. I, yeah, that's so good. I'm so in agreement with that. Um, because there, there are a lot of relationships these days where for one, women are being led by men who don't have Christ in their life. And that's also like really backwards. And then either the woman is put into this place of like, um, being quiet in her calling because she doesn't want to step overboard. Um, above the man or it's it's leading the family unit to be dysfunctional in a sense because then the woman isn't submissive or listening to the man and the woman gets ahead um of the man and then it just causes destruction and tension and all that and that's why the lord does call us not to be unequally yoked at all because it will cause tension and i know that um relationships in general already do cause tension a lot of stuff is already going to come up when you're in a relationship with someone but if you can do it on the lord's foundations and be equally yoked with someone and not unequally yoked i'm sure it would be a lot better <laughs> to, yeah. to submit to a man who is a godly godly man and is following christ because then we are actually following the lord on him exactly yeah no it a very tricky road for sure and like sometimes you do come across the guy that like wants to start talking to you and they say oh I love Jesus and I'm like oh that's fantastic but are you following him Thanks. there's a very big difference because I've loved Jesus my whole life but I haven't been following him my whole life there's mm -hmm. very very big difference in that and until that person can start doing that and genuinely start seeking away from Christ because I feel like for most men who say they love the Lord sexual sin is their like number one prevalent thing that they're still caught in For and sure. I'm like are you the kind of guy that is going to be more than willing to wait until marriage like is that something that you mm -hmm. really can't settle for is somebody who like is kind of like poking you here and there like hey like we could do some things but not others like we can still like make out and like um like touch each other but not actually like participate in the act and I'm like no that's still sin 
Yeah. Like any form of sexualness between an unmarried couple is sin. And that's why for me, I've kind of had to create values around that too. So that when I do get into a relationship that is from God, I am very, very clear with those boundaries and intentions. Like I'm not going to be making out with you. We're not going to be like doing like little things in the bedroom while like we're not married. Like that's all going to happen after marriage and it'll be at like whatever time you freaking want it. It doesn't matter. But like it really has to stay very pure before that marriage happens, before the ring is on your finger and you've said your vows. Like, I don't know for me personally, like a peck on the cheek would even be a little bit too much. And that's just at the, where I am at this point in my life. And that's just where the Lord has kind of put my mind in the purity state. It's like, yes, we'll hold hands in public. That's fine. It's not sexual to me. But anything above that is just let's wait. Because it's so much better when you do. Hmm. I, I love that you're speaking into that. Because that's something that's been slowly revealed to me. Is I'm not even sure if I want to kiss a guy anymore until my wedding day. Because... I feel like it's really unloving to take away something from someone and then not even know if you're going to get married or anything. Like I'd rather just wait, get to know the person, their heart, who they are, what their mission is in Christ. And Mm -hmm. if we line up with that and our visions align, then yeah, like let's get married. But like, we shouldn't be doing anything sexual, fornicating, anything like that no. outside of a covenant at all. Um, it's, just, it's just really selfish. And it's, it's for our own pleasure to take away something that's not ours. Like they have not committed, neither of us have committed the ultimate sacrifice in a sense to forsake all others. Definitely. And yeah, it's, I I love that um, you've been revealed that as well. That's really awesome. There's, I know that that's a hard thing for people to wrap around their brains, especially with how sexualized our world is, is like, oh yeah, well, how can you like go till your wedding day and just not kiss anybody? Well, Well, not only that, but like when people are kind of like, oh, I could never marry somebody that didn't have the same sexual needs as me. And like, why would you wait until after marriage to find that out? Yeah. like, Like you have to test drive them. And I'm like, we literally, no. I have a vagina, they have a penis, they match. <laughs> like, yeah, and you'll have your whole lives to kind of like get used to each other's styles, that kind of stuff. Like, exactly. And you don't need to sin just to find what you want. That's not how the Lord wanted it. That's not what he created for man. Exactly. And that's the other thing is like people think that they need to see how a person is in the bedroom when like depending on if they get married say they're not going to get married then they take that with them bring that into the bedroom with someone else and then like you were saying like i was looking for him inside of every other partner we begin to look for our partners that we've had sex with and compare them to our next partners and we're not supposed to be doing that that's why the lord wants us with one person and one person only because we we do start to compare and we were never meant to do that at all and imagine if you were in a relationship with someone one time one time only it was your only time having sex with them you've never seen another body part and you literally just wanted to get to know them like that's one of the most beautiful things ever is just exploring their body who they are not thinking about oh well this person did this and I wonder if they'll like that. No, like it should be about like you guys just intertwining together as one flesh and learning about that with each other, not learning about, oh, well, this satisfies them and this satisfies them. So I'm going to take that and bring that here. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? 100%. And I feel like that's a big struggle for me too, is like, that's probably another reason why I'm still in this single period is because I know for a fact that if I was placed with somebody right now, I would still be doing that and looking for like that pleasure that did this for this guy and that for that guy and like placing that within that relationship. And until I can get through that mentally, I believe that I will be single. And like, even for me personally, like I've felt and not 
I, I don't feel like it's really been spoken to me yet, but it's just been like thoughts crossing my mind. Like maybe I'm not meant to be married while I'm on this earth. And like, maybe I'm supposed to be single, which is another thing I have to feel like I've become okay with in Christ. Because if I don't have somebody created for me because of all that sin that I created in my past, I just feel like it's so hard for me at this point to kind of get out of that mental mentality of just like focusing on those past relationships. Mm. And like, I feel like that's okay for some people. Like some people feel like being single their entire life is a death sentence. But then for like, I've heard that even. And I'm like, at one point I thought that was going to be the same for me too. And still sometimes being alone gets to me to that sense. But I feel like we're not truly alone and we just need to like figure out and feel that Christ is that person for us and that's why we're called the bride we are the church and I feel like just because you can't physically see or feel him or even place like for some people like a sexual like aspect around that I think that's the most beautiful part is when you get past sexuality of like a husband and just look at the relationship and the covenant that you can have because like I know married couples who haven't been able to have sex in years because it's just like maybe like they're too old and like parts aren't working anymore but they still want to be married because they've built such a strong bond and it's not about that and I think that's where a lot of people need to get to Mm -hmm. and like when we were talking about um like couples not being able to have sex before marriage but then being disappointed with like the sexualness that they're being given once they are married I feel like I've gone to a point where we need to feel like sex is not the most important thing like if you do end up finding out that you're not sexually compatible with the person that you've been given by God that's okay like you just need to find other ways to bond with each other and if if you want to have kids like use sex as like something to be like considered in like what's the word I'm looking for reproduction rather than pleasure And, like, you can use sex just for reproduction and, like, still kind of try to enjoy it, but you don't have to be doing it every single day or even every week. Mm. Like, if you don't enjoy it, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. It's just, I don't know, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I really like that you brought that up because um, it's true. I mean, we are made to be fruitful and multiply. So if if that isn't something that um, is of pleasure or anything when we're in it, use it for kids, you know, like that, that's really cool. I, I like that you brought that up. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's other ways to bond with that, like your spouse too, like whether it's like going to the mountains for a weekend and just enjoying each other's company or even just like holding hands exactly. or like just going and watching a sunset. There's so many other ways to be intimate other than sex. And yeah. I feel like society has just pushed that down so much that it's just like oh if I'm not sexually compatible with this person then I don't want to be with them which I think is disgusting yeah sex has been a huge highlight in our whole world um it's infiltrated the whole world and our minds where it's like that's the first thing we look for in in everybody in a sense of like oh would they be a good sex partner already thinking about sex with the person when like for one that's degrading but like that tends to happen because that's just our whole world right now. We're, we're looking more in a sexual way instead of like, all right, what is the vision that this person has on their life? Uh, like that God has given them and what are they doing to uh, continue and grow the kingdom, you know? And that's where we need to get to is really learn about the mission that people have instead of how can they provide for you sexually because one of the biggest things in marriage is how are you highlighting christ through your marriage yeah and if you're not doing that why get married (laughs) exactly it's like like, even if you like marry somebody and have like such a good sexual bond with them that's fantastic but what if one of you does get to the point where you can't do that for the other person anymore like have you built a strong enough bond within christ and each other that you still want to be with them after that. Like what if somebody gets in a car accident and loses all function below the waist? Like, Mm -hmm. are you still going to be happy in that relationship? And that's like the number one key is because divorce is despicable to the Lord. And I don't believe that little things like that should really affect the value that we place on people. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love that so much. So, um, to the people on the other end listening, um, 
if they are struggling with pornography, fornication, having sex out of marriage, all, all that in that realm, what, what could you say to them to encourage them on their journey? I would say from coming from somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience, was only in the sexual world for maybe two and a half years of my life, I'm probably not the best person to give the advice, but I would say from how much I enjoyed it to how much I despise anything about it outside of marriage at this point, just pray. Just 100%, even if you don't have the Lord yet in your life, maybe you're on edge of just believing in general, just start seeking out Christ in all aspects, whether it be going back into history to prove it to you through history or whether it just be through prayer. Just don't lose hope in the fact that he wants to save you. He wants you to repent and he can. You just have to be persistent. The Lord doesn't work for us until we become a servant of him. Mm. And that's the number one key is that people will say like, oh, like I've tried praying. I've tried doing this. I've tried begging the Lord, getting on my hands and knees and screaming out to him, but it just doesn't work. You need to submit fully to him before he can start working in your life. If you're just asking him to help you in certain situations without actually living out his will and his law, then I, I feel like it's a dead end road. Mm. Wow. So good. So good. Okay. So if anybody on the other end wants to reach out to you, ask you questions or anything like that, where can they reach you? Um, on my Instagram, I'm more than welcome of messages of any kind. Um, I really suck at replying, so I will try my best to. Um, but my Instagram is at Espresso Livia, and that's E-S, not E-X. Um, and then, yeah, it's just Rob and Olivia, and that'll pop up. My Facebook's also good, too. So that's just Rob and Olivia and then Krayling. Awesome. So, I yeah, I need to spell, but good luck. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely make sure to put all your links in the description. I'm just really glad that we got to do this. I pray that um, this just brought so much encouragement to you, whether you are um, having sex, waiting till marriage, in a porn addiction, you know, just all that type of stuff. There's no condemnation on you. The Lord has already freed you from all this stuff. Just continue praying, like she said. So yes, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks for having me.